be talking about the heart and the circulatory system. This is part one of a two-part series where I talk about the heart and the respiratory system. But right now, let's just talk about the circulatory system. The circulatory system is the system that pumps blood and nutrients all across your body. And that is the reason that you're still watching this video right now. This system is business partners and friends with the respiratory system. But I'll get more in depth with that later. The circulatory system mainly consists of three things. The heart, the blood vessels, and the blood itself. Let's talk about the blood first. Blood is a fluid that consists of red blood cells, plasma, white blood cells, and other things. It mainly consists of plasma, which is the medium that your red blood cells float around in. Also, there's this misconception where the red blood cells are actually blue before they touch the oxygen. They're actually red and whenever they touch oxygen, they don't change color. They're always red. Anyway, the reason that these red blood cells are red is because of a chemical known as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is inside the red blood cells itself because the red blood cell is actually hollow. Inside this hemoglobin are four binding sites for four pieces of carbon dioxide and four pieces of <clears throat> four pieces of oxygen. Now this red blood cell floats around around the body and then it goes back to the heart. And the tubes that carry this fluid, this blood, is the blood vessels. The blood vessels are like pipes going all around your body. Some of them, called the arteries, are very thick and strong. The others are veins that are quite thin and have valves. And the rest are capillaries, which are so thin that some of them only allow one blood cell to pass at a time. Let's talk about the capillaries first. The capillaries are the junction between the veins and the arteries. They connect them together, basically. The capillaries are like roads, and the veins and arteries are like highways. So they're branching off, giving nutrients and oxygen to whatever lucky cell managed to get past it. Now let's talk about the veins. The veins carry blood from the rest of the body back to the heart. It has built-in valves in it so it can control where this water uh, where this blood is going. You don't want it to go back. That's why every time the heart pumps, it opens those uh, open those valves and when it doesn't pump, it closes it. Now the arteries. The arteries are very thick. They have to be strong to withstand the pressure of the heart. The arteries don't have valves. And they are the main, uh, they carry very much oxygenated blood. The veins carry deoxygenated blood. The arteries carry this oxygenated blood away from the heart. So away from the heart to the rest of the body. Oh, and fun fact. There is one artery and one vein that are switched, and it is at the heart, which is, which is the thing I'm going to discuss right now. The heart is a big organ. It is mainly the size of your fist, usually. The heart consists of four chambers, the right atrium and the right ventricle, and the left atrium and the left ventricle. Let's start with the right atrium. The right atrium is filled with deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood comes from the superior and inferior vena cava. 
which come from the top and the bottom of the body. So basically, this is the first arrival site for the deoxygenated blood. After that, the heart pumps and it squeezes that deoxygenated blood through a valve called the tricuspid tri 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 valve, which is a really good name because it has three plates, opening and closing. This opening and closing is the same as the ones in the veins. They regulate the blood flow, which means that they don't allow this blood to go backwards, because that will be bad. After it goes into the right ventricle, the heart pushes it again, and it shoots up to the lungs. The lungs oxygenate the blood, and then the heart pumps again and the blood gets shot back into the heart. After that, it arrives at the left atrium, which is the first arrival site for the oxygenated blood. And then the heart pumps and it goes through another valve. And then it pumps again and then it gets shot out to the rest of the body. Now, that fun fact I was talking about. The name of veins and arteries come from what direction the blood is flowing. But there's an exception. When your heart pumps the blood into the lungs and also when it comes back from the lungs, it is oxygenated and deoxygenated. Since the first thing the blood does is go to the lungs away from the heart and it's deoxygenated, it's called an artery besides the deoxygenation. And then once it comes back from the lungs, it's oxygenated, but now it's going towards the heart. So it's a vein. Kind of weird if you think about it. When your heart squeezes the blood and it goes all over your body, it uses the largest artery in your entire body, the aorta. The aorta kind of looks like an E, but you put it like this. It's three, it goes like this, with three things branching up, and then the rest goes down into the legs. The two ones on the side go to the arms, and then the middle one go to the head. And the rest, well, they just feed back to the heart. Because the heart, of course, it's a big organ, a big muscle. It needs some oxygen too, right? And that is the end of this lesson. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.